A very good evening to all our viewers. Welcome to Tuesday's edition of uh, the Evening Review. My name is Tewan Jabela, your host. Tonight on the show, we are welcoming back uh, former Prime Minister Naha Sangula, who likes calling himself citizen uh, Naha Sangula now because uh, he doesn't uh, very much, uh, uh, he's not stuck in the past. Uh, welcome back to the show, Tate. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah, wonderful. I hope you're surviving the cold. Uh, in fact, I can see that you... <laughs> strong enough. You, you have pitched up completely. <laughs> strong enough. Yeah, strong enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to engage you on a number of issues in the shortest time that we have. One of which is, of course, uh, you are a, a stalwart of the ruling party, Swapo. Um, there's a lot of headlines lately about... Um, the build up to the Congress uh, that many people hope will still take place place this year amid attempts by some to say that uh, there must be a, an extraordinary Congress to postpone it to 2024 so that there's only time between then and the general elections but um, are, you, are you in any way involved in the either campaign groups or, or in candidacies? Not at all. Uh -huh. I'm happy where I am. Yeah doing what I like to do, and uh, making my small contribution to the public good yeah, yeah. in my own way. In your own way. But uh, what is important to me this time around is for our party to take a mirror and to look itself in the mirror and to see whether it can recognize its face. Mm. I think the face is bruised because of uh, division, uh, fragmentation, disunity. And uh, I think uh, those comrades who are going to the Congress they should be aware that uh, unless this state of affairs is addressed, mm -hmm. uh, those who are seeking political offices might be chasing mirage, mm -hmm. political mirage, so to say. In, in what sense would you say that? In the sense that uh, if we go to elections in this state of affairs, there will be likely to be a repetition of what happened during the regional and local government elections. Mm, mm. Where Swapo lost even the governance of the capital city, Bindok. It was really uh, disappointing. Yeah, yeah. So to say. And uh, if, if we are not careful, we might find ourselves either in a coalition or in opposition comes 2024. Mm -hmm. That's why some of us are concerned about the imperative of uniting the party mm -hmm. and they have a common goal, a common aim, a common objective, a common vision mm -hmm. for the future. Indeed. So, so the, um, I mean, since you said, you know, you're not involved at all in any of the campaigns, whether as a, as an active campaigner or, or as a candidate in any of the positions that are, are for grabs, um, you, you then have nothing to lose. Who, who should, who should take over Swapo going forward? No, I have everything to lose. You know? Yeah. When I joined Swapo, I was not even 20 years old. Then I went in exile when I was 21 years old. I, we, four of us walked from Ondangwa by foot through Yantana, through Congo, through Kurenkuru, through Rundu, through Andara, Shakawe. Uh, Maun, Francistown, Botswana, Botswana land, then. Mm. Then, when we left, 
Of course, the International Court of Justice was dealing with the issue of Namibia. We thought, we were convinced that uh, our cause was just, and the International Court of Justice will rule in our favor. We didn't expect to spend 20 years in exile, but we did. And for that reason, Swapo is basically my mother and my father. Mm. But, but that I is invested too much in it during my youth. Yeah. And uh, I don't want to see that uh, this dream, this vision called Swapo, uh, goes into fragmentation. Mm. disappear from the face of uh, Namibian political uh, space mm. and all that. When we grew up in Swapo, we were not working really for personal benefits, as it is happening now. We were working for a broader common good, not only for the freedom of Namibia, but also for the total liberation of the Namibian people, liberation from hunger, from poverty, from mm. unemployment, from divisions which you are seeing now, mm. and all that. that. That was our commitment. Of course, I understand that uh, you are saying I have nothing to lose, meaning materially. Uh, I'm not in swap because of material <laughs> benefit, not at all. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, was, I wasn't, uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe to that extent. But of course, I was just saying that in terms of, uh, <clears throat> because a lot of people in Swapo get haunted by their, uh, by other powerful persons in the party if they are found to be aligning themselves with this or that candidate, for example. Um, so they would, we have, there will be cases of purging, cases of, uh, people being hounded out of their jobs and, and stuff like that. And, and I'm saying that you, in your case, that can never materialize. So you have nothing to lose by simply saying to me now who you think should be taking over the party. Who's your candidate? I don't look at the face of people, neither at their gender, nor of their age. I look at the ideals a person is trying to promote. Mm. What kind of society is this person likely to build? I look at commitment. Whether this person has commitment to the well-being and the welfare of the people. Mm. Not commitment to oneself, but to the people. I look at experience whether this person can truly uh, bring up something new based upon this person's experience. Mm. So I don't look at the face of a person. I look at what the person stands for. Does Swapo have those people that uh, can tick off the boxes that you just mentioned? Uh, who, who are those people that you think can tick off those boxes? They are rare. <laughs> yeah. They are a rare breed. And uh, they are very difficult to find, yeah. but they can be found. Mm -hmm. People have got commitment to the people of this country. So when you're talking about, um, we've seen people like uh, former President Noyoma, uh, I've seen uh, General Namolo, General Shelley, I think also, talking about, oh, it's time that the country gets a female president. Uh, is that, uh, and you just say that you don't look at gender and stuff like that. You, 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 you don't believe that it's time for a woman to take over? I don't care. I don't see any difference between a man and a woman. The, the only difference is the biological thing. Queen Elizabeth, has been ruling Britain since I was a, a toddler. <laughs> she's still there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's a woman. 
Yeah. Bold mayor ruled Israel, even during the difficult times of war. Mm -hmm. She did it. She saved Israel. Indra Gandhi ruled the most populous, one of the most populous nations on earth. She did her job. Unfortunately, she was assassinated. She was a woman. So what's the problem? Why should we bring these kind of divisions mm. unnecessarily in the party? Mm, mm. These divisions of gender, of generation, of uh, tribe, of region, of culture, of language, this type of divisions. Mm. They are not taking us anywhere. They are just creating space for those who want to exploit us, to exploit us comfortably mm. while we are fighting among ourselves. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Let's go for a quick break and uh, return for second half. Thank you. continue our conversation with uh, former Prime Minister Nahasangula. Now, you you um, you know, you know, there's this talk that uh, in 2004, for example, when Swapo held its uh, extraordinary congress in which yourself was um, a candidate, the party had a, a proper pool of potential leaders. They were, we had the Nahas Angulas, we had the Hidipa Mtenyas, the Pohambas, the Moseshi Tenderos, so many of them, uh, um, uh, Ben Amadilas, you can mention all of them. Um, so the pool was proper. You could be, somebody could wake you up in the middle of the night uh, and you could pick on top of your head a person that you think can lead the country and this is a perception that that is not the case at the moment. Um, I mean, do you think, for example, that the, the so-called uh, Helmut amendments have made it a bit difficult for the pool to be as big as possible for people to choose who they want? The so-called Helmut amendments are new things. Uh, obviously, they are contributing to to people feeling uh, that they are being alienated. Just imagine. You were a commander in plan when the country got independence. You went into NDF. Then you retire. Now you want to make your contribution. You are told to go and start from a section. People in the section don't know you. People who know you are the people with whom you worked and they are in their leadership. You find yourself, despite your immense contribution, the risks you took as a planned combatant, you are alienated from the family you were part of. Mm. How do you think you feel? Or think of a young person. Who really wants to seriously make a contribution to the public good? This young person decides, well, instead of just being a professional lawyer or something like that, I want to give my skills to the political party mm. or to, to the nation. Then you find yourself, you are locked out. How do you expect that kind of a person 
to be enthusiastic mm -hmm. about the party. Then, besides this, uh, technical things, there is the whole area of the type of ideals which are driving the Swap Party. Mm. There are no ideals now. What is driving the Swap Party is basically material benefit. Not even the public service. Not even a civic duty. Mm. No. That doesn't feature. What features is material benefit. It's unfortunate. Mm, mm. It appears that most of our liberation movements are caught up in this. I saw a comrades in ANC. They are fighting each other there. Basically for the same type of uh, goals. Mm, mm. To get near to, to the national cake. Mm, mm, mm. And uh, save yourself. That is not the culture some of us, political culture some of us were brought up with. Yeah. Our political culture was to work for the greater public good for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yes, as a, as a free people now, when you work, you get be, uh, uh, compensated for your work. But you should be happy with that compensation because there are your own brothers and sisters, your neighbors, who have not been able to get a job in government mm. or anywhere. They are struggling. You see them there sitting on the street corner, waiting for a, a truck to pick them up to go in the flood and get something to mm. survive. Mm -hmm. You see them guarding cars at the parking lots which belong to the municipality. And uh, of course, you feel guilty if you are a political person like mm. myself, mm. these are the people who voted you to be in a political office, but uh, you see them there. Now, if you go to this area, my neighborhood, Hindus, there are a lot of them there. When you go there, some of us, you have to have a $10 in your pocket because somebody will greet you, how are you, comrade? <laughs> <laughs> Because he wants you to do something yes. to, 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 to assist him to survive. This is the type of social uh, rot we are seeing among ourselves. But Namibia is a rich country. Indeed. Do, do, do you think then uh, that um, uh, <laughs> so we have a situation now we look at um, because again it's about going into that Congress it's about renewal. We've had things like introspec introspection, but we don't see the... Where is the renewal program? <laughs> That's why I'm saying that Congress is the perfect platform to get people who have... You go there and talk and talk. But you, need you, are, you are not even recorded. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but when people go back to... To their usual... Uh, the, the usual way of doing things. Yeah, yeah. No, but but that is that if is. If you want the renewal, you have to start with internal dialogue. Yeah. You have to start with confidence building measures. You have to restore trust and confidence in each other, and that can only happen through internal dialogue. A conference like a police conference is just an endeavor. Yeah. You get the floor, you say what you want. Who's listening to you? <laughs> you need, you need a, a situation where me, people communicate. Mm. People express themselves freely. And they, they feel that their concerns are being listened to mm. and documented. And you build up a common purpose as an organization, mm. accommodating the views of others. Mm. 
and they genuinely uh, accepting some of these views is perhaps pathways to also renewal. Yeah. Your Congress, your press conference will not do that. I understand that. Yeah. Now, the, um, we, we, we seem to have, I mean, th there are many people being talked about as, as potential future presidents to take over from President Hage Genko after that Congress, of course, de depending on the outcome. And uh, I suppose because of the of the Helmut um, amendments, also like I spoke earlier, the, 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 the pool has become so small. And in this pool, uh, Honorable Netumba Nadindaitwa seems to be uh, like we we called it in our newspaper this week that she's a run run runaway sort of candidate in this in this process. Of course, she has been on record stating that uh, she will not shy away from standing for that position. Uh, what what do you think of her? You've worked with her for a long time in in government. Well, <coughs> I believe in dem democracy. It is democratic for somebody to make himself or herself available, but at the right time. At the right time. As I said earlier, if we don't unify the party, she might just be chasing a mirage. Let us look at things which touch the reality of the people in Namibia. Mm. I heard the other day talking about taking water from Congo. Why not taking, not, why not taking, talking, uh, reviving the green scheme to enhance food security in the country? Mm. Why not talking about using the water in Nectar Dam? to irrigate and produce export and the internal consumption type of products. Mm. Uh, taking water from Congo River will take billions. And I see the government is struggling even to, to meet the basic needs of the government employees. Yeah. Where are we going to get that, those billions <laughs> to take water from there? Yeah and they put up a series of pumping stations for this water to reach Namibia. Let us talk about basics. Youth unemployment, child malnutrition, public health, mm. housing, food security. Land. And, and of course the land, utilization of land. Sometimes it's not a question that the land is not available. Sometimes land is available, but the way we utilize it, mm. we don't utilize it productively. I am a commercial and a subsistence farmer. And I spend time in my mahangu field. And I see how the soil is tired. Mm. Because we have not paid attention to the subsistence economy to help those people who are struggling out there to improve their soils. Yeah. We are looking the other way because they shop right somewhere. <laughs> Since you are employed, you <laughs> go to shop right. Yeah. Some of us don't eat from shop right. <laughs> we eat from our land. I hear you. Yeah. The, the last question then, uh, again, uh, you know, so, <laughs> and, and I think this is why people are talking about the female female president because I don't think it's necessarily because people are paying serious attention to gender, but maybe it's because the, the only people that are in the race now, what we are hearing is really just Meme Netumbo and the Prime Minister and uh, Sarah Kugangura Mazila. I don't see any men in this conversation anymore. Um, People used to talk about uh, Franz Kapofi. Obviously, I think the the Helmut amendments will make it will make it hard for him to to qualify, <coughs> and so <coughs> forth and so on. What, what do you think of Sarah Kungiro as a person? 
again, I'm sorry for putting you on the spot, but what do you think of her? As a oh, she was a minister of uh, finance. Yeah. I don't know what she left at the finance ministry. <laughs> Seeing that from 2016, everything seems to be collapsing. Yeah. She's a prime minister. Uh, I'm not quite sure besides the general administration, whether the, 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 there are new things happening there. But she's young. Sometimes when you are working, working under the shadow of somebody, you don't want to shine uh, more than that, that somebody. Mm, to outshine them. Yeah, to outshine anybody, uh, uh, your boss. Mm. You don't want to do that. Perhaps we, we are judging uh, a person from uh, from a perspective which, also, which is not real. Mm. Uh, what is important also yeah. is what type of a team do you put together as a leader? If you are elected a president, what kind of a team mm. are you going to put together to assist you? We have seen that uh, our current parliament uh, is really something uh, one is not proud of. Mm -hmm. Our comrades from Swapo, they, they, they are not active, they are not dynamic, yeah. they are not imaginative. I don't know why they don't hold workshops to educate each other about parliamentary procedures, about uh, lawmaking, about yeah. uh, everything around parliament so that uh, they become active. I hear you. The, 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 yeah, the time is, is up uh, uh, for my Prime Minister. I understand what you're saying, that um, you need a leader, but he's also made or she, she or she or he is also made by the team he's working with, which I think is a good point. Uh, I appreciate your time. Uh, from thank you. Minister. Thank you. You Wonderful. are welcome. Wonderful. I'm still around. <laughs> You're still around. Yeah. <laughs> that is uh, former Prime Minister Nasa Angola speaking to us in the evening review this evening. Uh, thank you for watching. <laughs>